yeah so hi all uh, very good evening and welcome back to the well this is the we'll be discussing the seventh week questions for today um, so yeah welcome back to the TA live sessions for AI KRR so can someone just confirm whether I'm audible and is the screen visible okay thanks for confirming Varun so yeah like I said so today we will be discussing questions from week 7 of the course uh, which we had missed uh, because of uh, my unavailability so yeah and tomorrow we'll have our regular live session again where we'll discuss questions from week 9 okay because week 8 we have already discussed last week and tomorrow we'll discuss quest uh, questions from week 9 today we'll be covering week 7 okay so without any further ado let's get started So yeah, this question this week uh, or this session will cover some questions from Prologue as well as some uh, introductory questions from things like Rate Net and those kind of rule based uh, inferences. So yeah, first we'll be covering some Prologue based questions and this is the first question in front of you. The first question says that you are given the following clauses uh, that includes the negated goal. So you have three of these clauses, C1, C2, and C3, and uh, you have two possible proofs given, and you have to decide which of these proofs uses the SLD resolution technique. Okay, so I'll give you maybe a minute to think about it, and then we can discuss the solution. Okay, any guesses? Which of these options do you think will be correct? Okay, so I'll give you a hint. So if you remember from the slides, uh, the slide on SLD uh, derivation, one of the things that was mentioned in the slides was the first resolvent has one parent from the goal and one from the program. Okay, so with this in mind, which of these options do you think will be correct? Okay, so if you look at these proofs one by one, what proof one does is uh, in R1, it uses, it derives QA from C1 and C2. Okay, so it uses clause C1 and clause, uh, clause 1 and clause 2, which is C1 and C2, and uses that to derive uh, Q of A. 
right which is basically not of p uh, question mark x or q of question mark x which is essentially p of x implies q of x right and c2 is p of a so substituting the variable x with a we get q of a right and proof 2 what it does is it uses clause 1 and clause 3 to derive not of pa and then it derives it in and then it derives uh, r2 which is an empty set from r1 and c2 okay so uh, like we just saw sld resolution the first resolvent has one parent from the goal and one from the program here proof one uses these uh, two clauses one c1 and c2 but none of these are from the goal right so the, neg the negated goal is contained in the third clause right negation of qa so proof one cannot be said to be following the sld resolution strategy whereas proof two uses clause one and clause three which includes the negated goal so our correct answer in this case would be proof two uses sld resolution but proof one does not okay any doubts I am still audible, right? Okay, so yeah, I'm assuming that this question is clear and also that I'm audible. Uh, yeah, if any of you have any issues, please let me know in the chat box or unmute yourself at any point. Okay, so we'll move on to the second question, which is uh, this on your screens let p denote an atomic formula in first order logic and then negation by failure which is denoted by a slash followed by a plus sign so negation by failure of p in prolog and which of these options are applicable to a negation by failure in prolog okay so again i'll give you a minute and then we'll look at which of these options are correct okay so in negation by failure what happens is um, so the correct options in this case I'm going to tell you the answers directly and if you have any confusion about it so this is essentially a recall based question right but if you have any confusion about this question maybe it will get clearer when we discuss the third question okay which is also concerned with negation by failure so the correct answer in this case will be returns true when all attempts to prove p fails and returns false when at least one attempt to prove p succeeds okay so this is the correct answer to question two now if there is any remaining doubt about why these two are correct 
that will be cleared up when we discuss question 3. So question 3 over here gives us a very simple program in SWI Prolog and it asks us a couple of questions. Okay, so here we are given link x comma y defines whether a path exists uh, via a direct link from x to y and root x comma y defines that there exists a path containing more than one links from x to y, right? So if there is a root between x and y, there will be a link between x to some intermediate node z and then from z there will be another root containing more than one or more links to y okay so this is the way these two are defined okay so root is defined root x comma y if there is a link between x and y which essentially means that if x and y are connected by a single link then that is also considered as a root from x to y or like i said if there is an intermediate node uh, between x and z then there is there has to be a link between x and y where y is the intermediate node and then a root from y to z okay so this is how link and root are defined and then we are also told that link a comma b is a fact link a comma c is a fact and then link b to some variable y that is defined as link b to y if there is a negation of failure of link a comma y okay so i hope the premise is clear and based on this you have to answer whether uh, which of these following queries will return a true or return more than one solutions okay one or more solutions or a true when we test these queries on prolog okay so if you have a prolog system around in your uh, computer or whatever you're using right now i would encourage you to try to solve this right now on your own and even if you don't have access to a computer right now you can try thinking about it and maybe in a couple of minutes we'll discuss the solution okay and uh, yeah please feel free to write down your answers in the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself okay so yeah any guesses on which of these would be correct which of these would return true or more than one solutions so i'm hoping that since week seven has already passed uh, most of you would have already been familiar with these contents and would be able to answer these questions faster okay well let's look at the solutions okay so over here link a comma y okay when you put that query it will return 
two possible solutions right link a comma b and link a comma c because we know that those are those are already facts given to us in the knowledge base right so those will return one or more solutions right so that will be true then uh, b what do you think will happen in case of b in case of b it's given link a comma e but we know that this is not a fact given to us in the knowledge base so it will straight away return false right now what about root a comma y so if you try to do the trace for root a comma y you will get something like this okay by the way so this is the trace for root a comma e right the second option option b over here what it does is uh, so it goes into the definition of root that we had used in the question right so root a comma e checks first first it checks whether there is a link between a or e okay uh, sorry this is the uh, fourth option okay okay let's discuss the fourth option and we'll come back to the third option again okay because we have the trace of it right now okay so it will check whether there is a link between a and e which will turn out to be false because we know that there is no link between a and e like we saw in option b right so it will read so it will recheck uh, whether there is a root between a and e using the alternate definition or the second line of the definition that we had provided and it will check whether there is a link between a and some intermediary node uh, y which is represented by this alphanumeric over here okay and as it turns out there is a link between a to b now next it will check whether there is a root from b to e okay again it will go into the definition of a root it will check whether there is a link between b and e which uh, and then it will check whether there is a link between a and e which will turn out to be false again so it will again go back and check whether there is a link between b and e and this will um, finally exit with a true why because because that's the way we have defined our operation over here you see negation by uh, false right we saw in the previous question negation by failure it returns true when all attempts to prove p fails okay in here our p is link of a comma y now all attempts to prove link a comma y failed in this in this trace that we just saw right that's why link of b comma y uh, will return as true and that's why this whole output will be returned as true okay so option d will be correct in this case okay and for very similar reasons option c will also be correct so you see uh, like with when we discuss the root for um, option uh, the trace for option d we can follow the similar logic and deduce that option c will also be correct option e on the other hand will be incorrect why so because when we go on to check whether there is a link between b and some variable it will check whether there is a link between whether there is a link between a and some variable and it will find that there is in fact a link between a and b so now you see that uh, we cannot we have at least one possible solution to the p that we just saw in negation by failure right so negation by failure will return false when at least one attempt to prove p succeeds and here we see that one attempt to prove p succeeded because of the presence of link a to b and hence hence it will return a false over here right and similarly the last option will return true following a very similar logic to what we discussed in options d and c okay so the correct options for question 3 would be a c d and f so okay addressing a question in the chat box so vignesh asks how to execute prolog programs in exam so vignesh i don't think in exam you will be given a prolog compiler or a prolog interpreter at that time you'll have to rely on your understanding of the workings of how a prolog program works right and then answer questions based on that so for that reason for that very reason i suggest that whenever you try to write a program in prolog and use it for practice always use the trace option to see what exactly is going on behind the scenes and how the program is proceeding so that you'll improve your understanding and 
once you understand how exactly prolog is functioning how the how the pro program is flowing to reach its final conclusion you'll be able to write it on your own or reduce what will happen on your own when you finally appear for the exam okay okay so i hope that was helpful and yeah so these are the correct question correct answers for this particular question any doubts in this question so i'll just leave this over here so that you can um look at it for a while maybe a minute and convince yourself that these are the answers and then we'll move on to the next question Okay so i hope this question is comfortable uh let's move on to the next question which is regarding the green and red cuts in prolog okay so here you are given two possible ways of defining this particular predicate called the remove all predicate okay so essentially what it does is if you are given a list that contains let's say for example some numerals let's say 1 2 3 2 okay and if you specify this some number like 2 what this will return is remove all it will remove all instances of that particular number in our example 2 so if you have a list like 1 2 3 2 it will remove all the twos and it will return only 1 comma 3 okay this is the this is what we want our program to do but this is defined in two different ways in remove all 1 and remove all 2 okay so what remove all 1 does is first it if it encounters an empty list it returns the list as it is okay which makes sense right and then it goes to the second line uh, where if the list is of the form containing a head element and the rest of the list in its tail uh, it checks whether that item that you want to or the element that you want to remove is in the head element itself if that is the case then it allows the cut operator then the cut operator present over here it allows the flow of the program to go to the next part of the def definition which is remove all e2 e comma t comma z s okay and essentially it just looks at the tail part so if i have to just show it diagrammatically give me a moment so what the cut operator does is you have some thing over here okay this will happen or this will be true if some condition okay and if this condition evaluates to true then what this cut operator will do it will let the flow of the program go to the next part of the definition which is this if this had been false then it will not allow the the cut operator will not allow the flow of the program to go to this part instead it will go to the next definition or the next line of your program okay which will use some other definition something something okay so this is essentially how the cut operator works so here it checks in this particular the second line of remove all one it will first check whether e is equal to h and if it is so it will uh, give the control of the program to this part remove all one e t comma z s okay and if that is not the case then it will go on to the third line where we will simply copy the head element to the, our output list and then look at the rest of the tail list of our of our original list okay so that is how we have defined remove all one remove all two on the other hand will in the second line check whether e is equal to h and then it will do something uh, appropriately uh, 
In the third line, it will again check whether E is not equal to H and then do some other thing appropriately. Okay. Now you have to decide which of these two cuts are red and green cuts. Okay. So I'll give you maybe a few seconds to think about it. This is a very straightforward question. Just think about the definition that we just discussed and see which of these cuts will be a green cut and a red cut. So essentially a green cut is one when if you remove the green cut from your definition, the output of your program is not going to be affected or not going to change at all. Okay. Whereas if it's a red cut, if you remove that red cut from your definition, the output of your program will completely change. Okay. So with that in mind, yeah, please go ahead with your answers and then we can discuss which of them are correct. Okay, so like we discussed, um, if if you think about the definition, remove all two over here, in both the uh, second and the third line, it will recheck whether or not E is equal to H, right? So essentially, it doesn't matter whether we have the cut over there or not, right? So if we even if we remove the cut operator from the remove all two definition, we will get the same output, okay? So essentially, remove all two contains a green cut, whereas remove all one on the other hand, if you remove that particular cut, it will give a completely different output. It will change the meaning of the program itself. Okay, so remove all one uses a red cut and remove all two uses a green cut. Okay, so option, the correct options in our case are options A and D. Okay. Any doubts in this question? If not, then great. Let's move on to the fifth question. So the fifth question asks us, which of the fall? Uh, so it asks us to look at the following prolog program. Okay, again concerned with a link operator over here or, uh, or a link predicate over here, and we are given three facts and then one definition of the link predicate. Okay, so we are given link a comma b, link a comma c, and link b comma c. Okay, and then we have defined link between y to x if there is a link between x to y. Okay, so just by looking at this program. Okay, the definition of this program, which of these options do you think will be correct? Uh, yeah, I see this uh, person who unmuted herself. Sandarya, did you have a question? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Can you see it now? Okay, I think there is there might be some lag. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think your voice is breaking Sandhya. So maybe I'll explain it once more and hopefully that will help. Okay. So what's happening over here is that um so here so the first condition the first statement you understood right if it's an empty list it will return an empty list in the second definition we will see whether the first element of our list which is the head element that is same as the element that we want to remove from the list if that is the case we will remove that element h from the list okay and then zs which is our output list we will recursively look at the tail of the original list original list only okay so if i have to just show it to you in terms of an example it will be something like this okay so you have let's say 2 1 3 okay let's say we have a small list of only three elements and the element that you want to remove is true okay so what the second line will do it is, is it will check whether the this is e okay this is e in our example this is h and 1 comma 3 is our tail okay so here our program will see that e is equal to h because both are given the value 2 right so we have e equal to h okay if this is true then what our program will do is because there is a cut operator over there which also sees that the condition before the cut operator is evaluating to true it will give the control of the program to the part after the cut operator which is this part okay so recursively it's going to check whether we can remove any further element only from the tail of the original list which is 1 comma 3 okay and it will again check from the beginning which of the which of these definitions apply to 1 comma 3 okay now what the third line will do is let's say the arrangement of the list was something different let's say the arrangement was 1 comma 2 comma 3 okay and again our e is equal to 2 the element that we want to remove is equal to 2 our head in this case would be 1 and tail would be 2 comma 3 okay the third definition what it will do is a third line of the definition it will check whether e is not equal to h okay this is equal this this represents not equal to h okay so it will check whether e and h are same or not and as it turns out e and h are not the same right so e is not equal to h sorry about that this whole thing will be evaluating to true because we know that 2 and 1 are not the same so again it will because there is a cut operator over here it will give the control to this part okay which essentially what it does is it will check whether there is any particular element that we can remove from 1 it will carry forward 1 from the original list and remove 2 from this list and it will check whether any further elements can be removed from 1 comma 3 okay so that is essentially what is happening that's the way we have defined this particular output list h comma zs okay even if you remove this particular cut that is given over here the program will still proceed in a similar way it will check in the second line whether e is equal to h if e is equal to h it will do something in the second line it will check it will check whether e is not equal to h and it will do something whereas in the first definition 
if e is not equal to h it won't even go to this part okay because this cut operator this red cut operator is there in the first definition if e is equal to h is not true it will straight away go to the third definition third line of the definition okay okay so does that make things any clearer okay okay great okay so coming back to the fifth question now so this is a pretty straightforward question for this you don't even need to run the prolog program just think about how we have defined this link predicate over here okay do you see any kind of circular definition and based on that can you think about whether or not this program will terminate as it turns out it won't terminate why because uh, when you go into check whether there is a particular link between let's say a variable y and a variable x it will go on to check whether there is a link between x and y because that's how we have defined our link predicate right and in order to check whether there is a link between x and y it will again check whether there is a link between y and x right and this will keep going on forever so it will go in an infinite loop because of that any query you make with this particular definition of link will result in an infinite loop and it won't terminate right so the correct option over here will be none of the above none of these queries will terminate okay any doubts on this question yeah sure manoj uh so let me show you what might happen over here okay so we have defined link as link or maybe we used y before so our program says that there is a link between a variable y and a variable x if there is a link between okay pardon my bad handwriting but yeah bear with me okay so we have defined that there will be a link between y and x if there is a link between x and y okay and so let's say we want to check if there is a link between a and b okay to see that or let's say a and y some variable to check that it will first check whether there is a link between y and a as per the definition okay this y could be any it could be a variable it could be a constant as well it could be b c anything and again to check whether there is a link between y and a it will again check whether there is a link between a and y again it will check whether there is a link between y and a so this will keep on repeating forever and forever because that's the way we have defined our particular uh, link predicate right so it will never terminate it will keep going on forever until we force the program to stop manually that is why any query as per this definition will not terminate does that help manoj okay that's great okay so i hope there are no further doubts in this question then like we can move to the sixth question okay so now we are done with the prolog part and now we are moving to the uh, retain at part of the week okay so you might have come across this thing called retain at and in that there might be something called refactoriness okay so this is a recall based question okay straight from the lecture slides so which of these options do you think is true in case of retainet in retainet refactoriness refers to which of the following okay so i'll give you maybe a minute to think about it and then we can discuss which solutions are correct or which options are correct
okay so if you recall from the lecture slides what refractoriness refers to is in conflict resolution it says that uh, a role instance may fire only once with a set of matching working memory elements okay so this is particularly relevant when the selected rule does not modify the working memory element matching its preconditions else only this rule would keep on firing so what refactoriness does is it ensures that only one rule doesn't keep getting selected again and again okay so based on this the correct option here would be refactoriness refers to blocking of the same rule data pair from firing again and again okay so the correct option would be option b Any doubts in this question? okay if not then that's great let's move on to the seventh question then so the seventh question um, talks about production rules in this particular language called ops 5 which you may have come across in the lecture slides as well okay so here you are given one rule called the p fun rule okay and you are given a working memory that contains only one element which is row num1 sum1 okay so now uh, what you have to do is you have to see whether the rule will get rule will get selected to be fired and if so how many times will this rule get fired until we uh, stop the program or the program comes to a halt or termination okay so again it's a simple question i'd encourage you to try to solve it by yourselves by you can use a pen and paper itself if you have one nearby uh, and then we can discuss the solution in maybe a couple of minutes okay Uh, yeah Manoj uh, so it may work on uh, prolog as well but you may have to do a bit more of programming to make it work exactly on prolog but uh, for this question you can try to solve it by your own hand as well okay so it's a pretty straightforward question you can just use a pen and paper and see how many times this rule is going to get fired Okay, so we can shift to the Jamboard to answer this question. Okay, so what essentially this program does is it checks, it looks at the sum, okay, and if it is greater than 10, it halts. Otherwise, it adds the num value and the sum value and puts it in the num value, 
okay so here it will look at sum which is 1 which is less than 10 so it will add 1 and 1 this one and this one and the result will be 2 so fun rule will be fired okay and sum will become 2 okay now again this sum is less than 10 so it will again add up 1 and 2 and sum will become 3 and this sum will come over here okay this one came over here sum became 3 again this 3 is less than 10 so we add 2 and 3 which is 5 and 3 comes over here then again this is less than 10 so we add uh, 3 and 5 and then 5 comes over here and then sum becomes 5 plus 3 which is 8 okay now 8 is again less than 10 so we again add 5 and 8 and 8 comes over here and 5 plus 8 13 becomes the sum okay now 13 is greater than 10 so now the program will halt okay so now that the program is halted we need to check how many times fun rule was fired okay and we see that fun rule was fired 1 2 3 4 and 5 times okay so the answer to this question will be the number of times fun rule is fired is 5 okay any doubts in this question if not then great let's move on to the eighth question then which is kind of related to the solution we just discussed so it follows the same premise and just asks what will be the last value of the sum attribute which we just saw it will be 13 okay so it follows from the same uh, solution that we just discussed discussed yeah Manoj do you have a question okay maybe not um, okay yeah Manoj right so let's move back to our jam board so you see that when we were at this step okay when sum was 8 right here the sum is less than 10 right so we again fire the rule the for the fifth time which is over here and because we fire that rule uh, this particular the which is this particular fact which is a result of firing that rule will get added to our working memory okay and because this is getting added to working memory the sum value will be updated to 13 and only then our program will stop so the last value before our program halted had a sum value of 13 which is 5 plus 8 Does that resolve your query, Manoj? Okay, great. Okay, then. I hope that you can move on to the next question then. And, okay. Sorry about that. So for the next few questions, we will be looking at this particular retainet, okay? So we have a working memory elements and we these are arranged in the form of these retainets where the yellow nodes over here are the beta nodes and the other white nodes are the alpha nodes, okay? And these are essentially, these beta nodes essentially represent some sorts of rules that we have over here, okay? and besides from this rate in it we are also given this particular working memory so in the previous question that we discussed we had only one element in the working memory here we have 10 elements and each of these 201 202 up to 210 these are the timestamps of the elements okay so i'll uh, keep this on this this screen on for a while so that you can familiarize yourself with the working memory as well as the rate in it and then we'll go to the questions that are upcoming based on this rate in it and the working memory okay so i'll just give you a minute to go through this rate in it itself
okay so i'm back i just gone out for getting some water and uh, i hope there were no doubts in between if there were please let me know again uh, also i hope you have familiarized yourself you have familiarized yourself with the radio net and the working memory now let's move on to the questions so according to the rule regular car which of the following is true about regular cars okay the options are it has regular tires it has slick tires the passenger limit is 4 and the power is between 100 and 300 horsepower okay so if you look at this um regular car rule over here which is contained in this b3 uh bit beta node over here so look at the edges incoming into this particular node okay so one of the edges that is incoming is coming from this tire regular okay so it means that it has a regular tire and then another edge is coming from limit equals to 4 okay so we know that the passenger limit is 4 then the horsepower is greater than equal to 100 and less than equal to 300 okay so these are the conditions given to us and let's check which of the options are correct so it has regular tires the passenger limit is 4 and the power is between 100 and 300 horsepower so the correct options are a c and d okay any doubts in this question Okay I can go over to the rate net once more if you have any confusion and I can leave here it leave it here for a while um so that you can convince yourselves about this answer Okay it's great if there's no doubt then let's move on to the next question which is about the conflict set so in the first round which of the following will occur in the conflict set so this i will encourage you to work out right now and then we can discuss the solutions okay so i'll go to the retain net once more so that you have a ready reference and you just have to select which of these rules will be part of the conflict set initially
okay so the correct answers in this case would be let's look at the options one by one okay so the first option is the formula one car f1 car and the working memory elements that take in that that are, that are being taken as input are 204 205 and 210 so let's look at our rate in it and see whether this holds true okay so let's look at f1 car okay and then look at then let's look at 204 205 and 210 okay so this says that the tire has to be slick fine that is okay uh, 204 says that the power of this vehicle k32 has to be 800 horsepower so is that true uh, yes so the horsepower for a formula one car has to be greater than 700 so this condition is correct the tire has to be regular which is incorrect right so the tire has to be slick for a formula one car right so the 205 is not matching so 205 so the first uh, rule that is given to us in the conflict set is wrong okay so f1 car this will not be part of the conflict set what about luxury car so luxury car 204 5 and 10 let's have a look so a luxury car can have a regular tire it can have a horsepower of greater than 700 which is also fine and it has to be have a uh, limit of passenger limit of 2 which is all satisfied in these 204 5 and 10 okay so 10 says that the passenger limit is 2 so luxury car is a perfect match and it will be a part of the conflict set okay similarly regular car and minivan will also be part of the conflict set because each of these rules will be perfectly matching with the information that is given to us and minivan 203 and 209 will not be a perfect match okay so the correct answers would be b c and d and uh, i'll let you see the rate in it once more and convince yourselves about the correct answers and if there are any doubts please let me know Okay, any doubts? If not, then that's great. Let's move on to the next question then. Okay, so the next question asks us in the rate net, what are the locations or the alpha nodes? Oops, yeah, now you, have, you, know, you see the question. So the next question is in the rate net, find the locations of the alpha nodes where the token 204 resides. Okay. And if there are multiple nodes, we can enter that as a comma separated list. Okay. In ascending order. Okay. Now let's look at what token number 204 was. Token number 204 said that power of this vehicle K32 has to be, has to have horsepower of 800. Okay. So which of these alpha nodes do you think could have a horsepower greater than uh, of around 800 okay one is a 12 over here which can have a horsepower of greater than equal to 700 and another is a 14 over here which can have a horsepower of greater than equal to 100 okay so the alpha nodes where this particular 204 em element is residing would be a 12 and a 14 okay any doubts there okay that's great 
if there are any doubts please let me know at any point okay let's move on to the 12th question then so now that we know that there are three options that we can use or fire three rules that we can fire in our conflict set from one of the previous questions we knew that uh, luxury car regular car and minivan so b c and d these three were part of our conflict set now we have to choose which of these rules to fire based on different strategies okay so one of these strategies is specificity okay so which of these options do you think would be fired for conflict resolution based on specificity okay again a straightforward question which of these options do you think would be correct okay any guesses any suggestions which of these do you think would be correct remember the conflict resolution strategy we are applying over here is specificity right so if you think about it uh, which one of these uh, uh, rules is more specific or needs us to do more checks in order to apply it okay so if you have to put it in formal terms one way to check that is this you can compute the sum of the path lengths okay for each of these rules if you check the sum of the path lengths that you have to check or uh, uh, yeah cross check in order to see whether this rule is eligible to get fired or not for each of these working memory elements then you can choose the one that has the maximum sum okay for example for this first rule luxury car for checking 204 element you need to check uh, three possible edges okay for checking 205 you need to check three more edges for checking 210 you need to check three more edges so the total will be 3 plus 3 plus 3 which is 9 similarly for minivan you need to check nine edges for regular car on the other hand you need to check 12 edges which means that you need to do more checks to uh, fire regular car or regular car is more specific and hence when we apply specificity the rule that will be fired will be the regular car rule okay any doubts on this question okay if there are no doubt then that's great then yeah we have something called recency which we are going to look at in the next question we we will just look at that Varun in a moment <laughs> okay 
yeah so there's uh, there are there are other conflict resolution strategies as well some of them are mentioned in the lecture slides in today today's session we are going to look at two of them only which is specificity one we just discussed and another is recency so yeah let's look let's look at recency so it's the same situation you have the same set of rules in your conflict set and you have to decide which of these rules to fire using recency okay so what do you do in recency uh, let's have a look at that so here what you do is if you have a rule in the form of uh, rule 1 rule 7 and rule 2 okay these are something different okay don't uh, correlate this with the question that is given to you so here you are given let's say three rules in your conflict set you first of all rank them or arrange them in a descending order for each of these rules okay so you see for each rule over here the working memory elements are in a descending order okay so 210 followed by 208 and 207 okay similarly for rule 7 and rule 2 as well after you do that you again uh, order them in descending order based on the first column of working memory elements okay so here you see that rule 1 has 210 rule 7 has 210 and rule 2 has 209 that's why it comes after rules 1 and rule 7 okay if these two values match for example here 210 and 210 match for rule 1 and rule 7 you look at the next column okay and here rule 1 has 208 and rule 2 has 202 that's why rule 1 comes before rule 7 and then rule 2 comes okay so you follow this to arrange all of your rules present in the conflict set and then whichever turns out to be at the top that is one that is the one that you fire according to recency okay now if you apply that to the rules that are given to us in our question you will have something like this the first one would be luxury car with 210 205 204 internally then regular car with 209 6 and 3 and minivan with 208 and 2 and you see all of these have columns also arranged in a descending manner okay so 210 comes first then 209 and then 208 okay and based on this the first conflict the, the, the topmost rule is luxury car so the value to so the rule that will be selected to get fired based on recency would be luxury car okay so any confusion about recency okay then that is great so we have arrived at the last question that we had for today so specificity sure okay so let me use the rate net to explain this to you once okay let's remove this okay let's use a different color for each rule okay so the first rule that we are going to consider among the conflict so you remember in the conflict set in the conflict set we had b c and d okay let's consider b first okay luxury car which has 204 5 and 10 okay so let's look at 204 205 and 210 one by one so 204 says uh, horsepower of 800 okay so that can be for for checking that you have to check this edge this edge and this edge okay so which this was a luxury car okay this one and then this this again this again and okay so we don't have any edge from there to the luxury car so we don't need to check that actually so k32 is the name so we can ignore that yeah it is satisfied now you have to see which of these nodes or which of these edges are being traversed to check this condition okay so if you look at two a3 a6 and a12 
yeah that's right now let's look at 205 which is tire regular okay so for that you have to check this one yeah this one that's right so you can look at the edges itself because you're going to count the edges instead of looking at the nodes itself okay so here again you have three and here you had three now let's look at 210 which was limit equals to two so for that this one that's right right so essentially you check three edges this way three edges this way and three edges this way right so total of nine edges okay now let's check for the second rule which was regular car 203 206 and 209 okay 280 and this is a regular car this one this one and this one yes 280 right so it's less than equal to 300 as well this one and this again okay now let's look at 206 that that's th that was the other one right yeah this one okay and what was the last element Two not nine. That's right. So limit is equals to four. So for that you have to check this one, this one. That's right. So here you check three edges from here, three from here, three from here, and three from here. So a total of twelve edges. Okay. Convinced? Okay. I think one got disconnected anyway so yeah the point is that for this rule we are going to check 12 edges yeah I see Varun has joined again so Varun are you can you hear me okay in the meantime while Varun sets up Vignesh you had a question you raised your hand okay the current assignment okay maybe maybe let's finish this questions discussion and then we can go and look at those three questions okay okay so we checked about regular car now we are only left with minivan 202 and 208 okay so if we look at that let's use a different color for that 202 says that horsepower of 290 right so again we will have to check this edge this edge this edge and then this edge sorry this one and this one and then this one this one and this one that is 202 and then 208 is limit equals to 8 which is this one this one and this one so again nine edges in total okay so out of these for regular car we needed to check 12 edges right which means that it was more specific that's why specificity selects regu regular car uh, I exactly more specific okay so now coming to the question that Vignesh asked can you tell us the question numbers again Vignesh okay let me just go there aha uh -huh. 9 10 and 11 so here you are given two rules init rule and work rule how many times did it system fire rules before it halted so this is very similar to one of the questions we just discussed right where we had something called a fun rule so essentially what init rule does is 
so you have a number uh, where represented by variable x that is less than 2 so if the number is less if the number x is less than 2 then you make a row uh, where attribute a has value x and b has value x so that's how you initialize and for the work rule if attribute a has value less than 4 and b has some value then you make a row uh, where a has value x plus y and b has value x okay so you start with these two conditions natural or nat of num having a value 4 and row have row of attribute a having value 1 and b having value 1 okay so let's look at which of these rules will be firing okay so here the first init rule says that if num is less than 2 then something will happen but we see that num has value 4 so init rule will not be fired and then let's look at the work rule uh, here it says that if a has value less than 6 uh, less than 4 and b has some value then we add a particular uh, this fact to our working memory where a has value x plus y and b has value x okay so here we are given that working memory element 102 has a as 1 and b as 1 which is a is less than 4 right so work rule will get fired and we will have uh, the updated uh, element in the working memory as 1 plus 1 plus 1 okay which is a plus b so now we will have a row of a has value 2 and b has value 1 okay again 2 is less than 4 so we will add 2 plus 1 3 so a will become 3 and b will remain 1 again b a is less than 4 so we will add 3 plus 1 4 and b will remain 1 so a will become 4 b will remain 1 okay and now we see that a less than 4 is not being met okay so a, a is equal to 4 right now so now we won't be able to fire any more rules so essentially our system fired rules three times before it halted that answers question 9 uh, are you convinced about it Vignesh okay after the system halts how many working memory elements are present in the working memory okay so we started with two working memory elements and then we fired rules three times that would result in three more elements right so two plus three so five elements in the working memory after the system halted so that answers question 10 agree with me okay now looking at uh, question 11 is it the value of x in the most recent working memory element row a x is which one uh -huh. okay this should have been 4 right because if it's 4 only then will the work rule be not the condition not be met okay I guess there is some issue with uh, question 11 over here has any one of you raised this query in the discussion forum or has it already been raised and uh, is there something being done about it okay if not then uh, if it has already been done then that's great just follow that uh, particular thread of conversation and see how uh, Vaskar and Sir responds to it if not I highly encourage that you raise this point in the discussion forum and if there is any issue with the question it will be corrected and the points will be re-awarded okay so as of now I feel that there should be four but uh, yeah yeah okay so yeah think about it once more maybe I'll also think about it again and if you if, if you still feel that it's wrong if and if I still feel that it's wrong I'll also convey this to Vaskar and sir and you can also do that via the discussion forum is that okay Vignesh and others okay so anything else that you would like to discuss Uh, okay, which question is that? Uh huh. 
ओके सो स्टडी द फॉलोइंग प्रोग्राम यूजिंग प्रोलॉग दैन आंसर द क्वेश्चन ओके सो वी एफ हू एंड बार ओवर हियर एंड दीज यूज सम काइंड ऑफ कट्स सो वॉट टाइप ऑफ कट्स आर यूज इन फू थ्री प्रेडिकेट ओके ओके दैट्स राइट uh so no so red cut means that if you remove that red cut from the definition for example if this this part was not even there in the definition and this part was also not there in the definition then would your uh, program still output the same thing if it still outputs the same thing then that's a green cut if the output changes then that's a red cut okay uh so answer changes with respect to what you would have got when you had the cut okay so when you have the cut you get some answer right now if you remove the cut if you get some different answer than when you had the cut then that is a red cut okay and if the answer remains the same before and after removing the red cut uh, removing the cut then that is the green cut okay uh, also one point to exactly exactly also also remember that sometimes red cuts can be converted to green cuts okay so you can you can rearrange your definitions in sometimes sometimes in different ways so that sometimes if there is a red cut it can be converted to a green cut by placing your cut operator in some different position okay so you uh, you can also look into that aspect and see if there is that reason that is figuring into this uh, particular foo having both red and green cuts okay or it may be that only one of these cuts is red and one of these cuts is green okay both red cuts and green cuts okay so for that maybe we'll have to check uh the best way to check it's to understand is to use uh, to the best way to check and understand it is to use prolog and trace itself okay so i would encourage you do that i unfortunately don't have a prolog uh, interpreter with me right now but uh, yeah i'll try that uh, once this session is over and um, yeah we can ca take this up again in the next live session if that is not still not resolved but yeah uh, just try just keep two different definitions of this foo okay call it foo1 which has both these two cuts okay then have foo2 which has only let's say the first cut and the second cut is removed okay and then we have foo3 which has only the second cut and the first one is sorry yeah so essentially exactly yeah so you have these four possible definitions and you see exactly and then you check whether the output that you expected with the cuts is that being remaining consistent or is it changing and if it is changing is it because of removing some particular cut or is it because of removing both the cuts okay so in that that way you can decide whether a particular cut is a green cut or a red cut and once you have that understanding then you can think about it in terms of without using trace itself okay yeah exactly okay what what is question 8 which of the predicates can be defined without using cuts okay so the one with it which has a green cut right or if it has a red cut which can be converted to a green cut it then can be redefined without using cuts question number 6 has uh question number 6 has both foo and bar right so i think it asks us about both foo and bar
which one mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's so it's giving you some information about both foo and var but it's asking you a question about foo only but uh, since since it's also since it's also has it also has information about bar so when you answer question 8 you can consider that as well yeah 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 okay thanks for your questions anything else that you would like to discuss okay if not then maybe we can close the session and a reminder again we'll move we'll meet tomorrow again uh, at the same time 6 pm same meeting link and we'll discuss questions from which one which one yeah yeah for sure for sure you just try out that prologue thing you just uh, try out that prologue uh, trace thing once and if possible you can also post the trace of it on the discussion forum so that others can also look at it okay i'll also try to do that to check it myself um, and then we can take it up again okay okay so see you tomorrow again and yeah let's close the session for today if there are no more questions yeah thanks all for attending